Hey you guys, Charlie here. Welcome back to Prison Architect. Um, I've let it run a couple of days, and I, no matter what happened, I said I'm going to let it run for a while. And what happened was, uh, over the course of that little while, um, I, a bunch of fights broke out. The danger level is still really high. But what I wanted to do was really just examine it. Just sit back and watch and see what happens. And what I discovered, uh, and you know what, it's probably very likely that at this point, somebody has been probably telling me this every episode, um, but I, 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 I'm sorry, I just can't read your comments yet. Um, okay, so what I've discovered is a couple of things. One, it looks to me like janitors are the ones that bring laundry, right? Move laundry basket to laundry. It looks like the janitors are the ones that move the laundry. So since I only have six of them, that's probably one of the reasons why things aren't happening very quickly. So let's hire a whole bunch more. Okay, now there's that. Another thing that happened over the course of this time is that our income started to drop. Um, and I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna, just gonna let this play on for a little bit longer. Our income dropped to the point where we're starting to lose money. So I do have to be careful with that. Uh, we're gonna have intake in 35 minutes. Um, well, 35 minutes for the game time, obviously. Um, we're gonna bring in 12 normal security because I have capacity for that. So we're, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to kind of get close to capacity with that. And actually, I think right at the last minute, I'm going to add a single... Uh, let's add one max sec there, too. We'll do that. Okay, so we'll bring in a few more prisoners. That's going to get us $7,000. Seven uh, and that's in 43 minutes. Oh, it was an hour and 32 minutes. Okay, fine. Um, so there's that. The next thing is, pretty much the only reason I'm staying alive right now is because I keep selling stuff that's being made in the workshop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, too. And I'm just going to sell a few of these things. I don't want to sell the logs because they get turned into the, the wood, the planks. And then I can sell those for a lot more. So there's that. This guy is still in here. I don't know if he was here at the end of the last episode. But he's been there for a while on this playthrough. Uh, at least while I've been letting it get on. So there's that. Okay, so the next thing I've noticed, and again, this is probably something that everyone's been saying, is we don't have enough food for these guys. And I think that's one of the, maybe one of the reasons why it's so dangerous all the time is because their needs for food is pretty critical. Not for the whole bar. See, I was looking at the whole bar and thinking, eh, it's not all red. <laughs> but really, um, I think the red part is maximum. And that's the why, like, if I was to sort of divide this up into maximum and, and regular, I could probably divide it down the middle. And I'm kind of thinking, like, this bar is over half full for maximum. So... What I think I need to do is I need to get more food going. But the problem with that, and I've added a couple of cookers just to kind of help with that. But the big problem with that is that I didn't have enough cooks. Um, so I'm hoping that having more cooks is going to help me here. But really, I think the regime can also change because, well, first off, they need to have more free time, which, like, you know, had to start over, which is really shitty. Um, there's 86 hours left in this free time period, which is just blah. Uh, but that is, it is what it is. How is Scott Gordon doing? I don't even know if he's in the cell. Is he in here? No. Where is Scott Gordon? Let's pause this. It's always important to know exactly where he is. He's in solitary. Okay. That's good. He's got 17 gang members. And the reason why the blue gang is growing so much more than the other gangs is because they have a leader. And that leader has promoted somebody. There you go. See, this is a, a lieutenant, I think is what they call it. Anyway, so that's uh, this guy is capable of recruiting and organizing and things. And so that's why the Blue Gang is growing a little bit faster than the rest of them are. Uh, take a look at informants. I have some that have really high coverage. Uh-oh. Let's pause it really quick. We're getting another gang member, but I also have ex-law enforcement and a snitches on the bus. So I'm going to have to do something with that right away. So let's do the rap sheet here. This is an ex-law enforcement officer. Uh, yep, ex-law enforcement. So, we're going to put him in protective custody right away. There's also a snitch. And there's a gang member here, too. Okay, one in the blue and one green is coming in. And then somebody here is a snitch. That guy. Uh, yep, so this guy also gets to be in protective custody. Cool. Okay, so what I need... I'm going to pause it really quick. What I need to do is I need to have more food on the table when they go to eat. Um, right now, everyone starts with an hour of free time, and I kind of like that. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not sure if I like it a lot, but I kind of like that. Just because, like, whatever it is they want to do, they like, just get it out of their system right away in the morning. So, like, these guys are working out right now and everything's fine there. So, I think what I want to do, since these guys are completely segregated from the rest of the population, there's no reason why I need to stagger these times. There's just not, there's no reason for that. However, the reason for it is, I think, because uh, I only have a limited number of cooks, right? Like, cooks are, like, they have to travel between kitchens. Like, look at this. She's got to travel up to the other kitchen now. And, like, these guys are working between kitchens. So what I might want to do is stagger the eat time so that the full kitchen staff can participate in each kitchen back and forth. I don't know if that's possible, but I, th I think that might be what I want to do here. Um, it's kind of too late to start the day like that now, but I think as soon as their eat time starts, I'm going to adjust this regime so that their day starts earlier. Uh, and then uh, we'll put eat time up here. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put eat time here and here. Uh, and then after that, there'll be the yard. But I have to wait till the regime changes. So let's speed up time real quick and get it to be 9. Okay, now it's 9 a.m. They're going to start eat time. I'm going to change this to yard. Um, and then we'll just keep this going. Now, I want to pause it really quick. I know I do. I know I spend a lot of time pausing it, but like I really want to analyze what's happening here because I cannot... This prison is not going to survive this whole time if the violence continues. One of the reasons why the violence is continuing or it just keeps going, I think, is because, where is it? Right here. We still have 13 people waiting solitary confinement. Now, I don't mind 14 people in lockdown per se, but the lockdown and the solitary makes them miss other things that it grows their needs. So having them in there that long is not working at all. Like it increases the punishment, but it's not working. Uh, Benjamin Forrest is also a really, he's been a pain in my ass too. Um, but pretty much everybody in the orange shirt's been a pain in my ass. Uh, so like right now, for example, if we pause this again, right now, um, Scott Gordon is still in solitary. So he's missing all of the stuff, right? Like he's missing everything. And all the all of his needs are not being met. He's not he's not getting his food. He's not able to you know shower. He's not able to get fresh clothes. He and currently right now he's not even able to get warm because my solitary block is not done. I have plans for like redoing solitary in one big building, but there's that. Um, another thing I want to take a look at here is logistics. Okay, I want to go to um, uh, food distribution. So. Food distribution is all over the place. We can kind of see that each one of their cells, they're capable of going to the food. They go to the canteen. It's all, it's all fine. Um, same thing here. Like everyone can go to this. But if you'll notice, like the holding cell, for example, there's one line. And it just goes to the holding cell. To where each one of these, they all go to individual cells. And it's because this isn't considered a cell block. Um, like I can't, I can't say, like if I, if I go to say, it is, I wonder if intelligence will show me anything. It doesn't look like it. It's okay. I'll just pick a random cell. Well, unlucky person if they have something in there. This guy's got throw up in there, so that's the one. So normally I'd be able to say search cell block, and it would search all the cells in this area, but because I got the outdoor prison idea, the block stops when you get outside, which means it stops here. So this isn't considered a cell block. Now that's not a big deal to me. I don't really care whether or not this is considered a cell block because I can still do deployment in this area. And the reason why I can do deployment in this area still is because I got this fenced in. There's a door here, it's fenced, there's a door. It's, it's, all, it's all enclosed uh, and that's why I put the fences there. The problem is though, like areas like this, uh, what is going on here? Oh, okay. No. Wow, when did I do that? That's, that's messed up. Uh, do I wanna do this one? I don't think I wanna do that one, hold on. I think it's this one, like that and like that. Yeah, let's make those cells. The problem with cells like this though, are that I can't do anyone here. I have to do um, a, a route here, a patrol instead, which is like okay, but it's not nearly as like elegant as I would like. So what I might do is put like a, a just a big jail door here and a big jail door here. And then I could have just, you know, have someone stationed around in there. But I don't know if that's really worth it. It might be better just to have the deployment, uh, just to have the patrol, I don't know. This guy's injured. He needs clothing while well, he's naked, so that 
pretty much takes care of that. Uh, he also has a little bit of starving. Oh, he's not naked. He's just... I was weird. I don't know. Um, anyway. So I've kind of been trying to figure things out, you know? And, like, parole is also saving my ass. Because people... See, there's some good people... Um, they keep making... They keep making parole. Like, this guy here... Um, he's gone one day without incident. But he's, like, look at all of his needs. Like, he really has a lot of needs. I think I look at his sheet and go to grading. 25%. He's going to make parole. Which is great. Uh, this guy grading 19% he's gonna make parole that's great take a look at this guy rap sheet grading 45% not gonna make it but it's actually going up since he got here which is interesting I wonder why uh, he has an active addiction that would do it but he's got some good reform points though he, he I don't know what's going on with him he came in making parole and he's gonna leave without it how many people can work in the workshop here? The workshop is really saving me, like big time. I'm gonna sell. Gonna sell anything? I got. I got 15k. I'm still. I want to take a look in finance after oh, this whole time. I still have the initial loan, uh, so I'm still 6,250. Uh, if I go to Grant, I, I still owe 125k. So I really need to get on that. Um, and I keep saying that every episode. I feel like, but um, something comes up usually that just makes me have to spend money. And I don't want to do that. So right here we've got meal time. And we're not getting all of them fed. About 31% of the prisoners have ate so far. So if I speed up time. Like there's food here. They're just not taking it and eating it. So like if they would just eat it, you know. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so we got some early prisoner release. That's good. So I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm just kind of wanting to see what this is all about, right? I kind of want to just take a look and see what's going on here that makes this happen the way it does. That's what I've been trying to do. Um, and it, it, it's hard to say. A lot of things it's hard to say. But I think the laundry thing, I think having the more janitors is going to help that. If I take a look at staff, do I need another dog handler? Because the dog roots and stuff have been helping me with escapes too. Like they, these guys are really good at escaping. I think this right here, I need to do. I think I need to do a, 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 a door here as well. So let's do a large jail door. Here. And over here. And then we'll do. I think I kind of want to route these guys this way. Because there's a lot of people already over here. So if I route these guys this way, that might work. So if that was the case, then what I could also do is... Eh, that's kind of... Nah, I'm just going to put a regular jail door on the sides of these. And there's already a solitary door here, so that's fine. So that's going to lock these areas in. It's still outdoors, but there's a door that sort of like prevents them from going everywhere where they want. And that will kind of make these blocks, kind of, because it'll close them in and it will allow me to put people deployed in that, those specific areas at specific times, which I think will be good. So, okay, so right about now they get their free time, they get to do what they want. I do want to put some more exercise equipment in, but they're not, like they're never full. These weight benches are never full. And I feel like as, and if, if there's still weight benches left over that people aren't using, then they don't need any more, you know? If, like, if it gets full and there are people waiting to use them, then fine, I'll give them more. But, like, for now, I don't think that's necessary. So, check the regime again. We're at free time now, which is good. I think I'm going to give these guys a little bit more free time just because I really want them to be happier. And look, now the happiness is... is well, the happiness is good. Now, people are starting to feel like they're more well-treated, right? They're starting to get their needs met. And solitary, there's only three people waiting for solitary now. So I really think we just needed to, to wait this out. We needed to address their needs. We needed to, you know, really kind of get that going. But feed all prisoners, right? The red and green, I don't know exactly what that is. Like, I, I've always thought that that was like the percentage of prisoners that are hungry versus the number of meals we have. But then this other bar shows up during eat time. And like these guys aren't, like they're not, uh, they're not making a ton of food. And I'd like them to. I have a whole bunch of serving trays, 
so that they'd make a bunch of food, but I really think they're just understaffed. So maybe I have a couple more cooks. I have 573 per day I'm making right now, so I'm gonna have a couple more cooks. We'll see what that does. Now if I go to programs, this is the main reason why my money was so drained too, is programs. And um, you can see there, I have to keep paying, 1300 for reform program session. Um, if you take a look at, uh, do I have six parole rooms or five? How many did I make? Whoops, where am I going? Right here. Uh, I made five, okay, good. So this is the number of, that's the correct number of hearings, good. Um, foundation education, we have 17 interested. Let's pause this. 18 people interested in this, okay? How do I tell whether or not the people who are interested in the program are interested in it? Uh, how, do I, how do I tell if the people are in maximum or minimum? I, I don't know. So right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna prioritize maximum because they're the only ones that have a library. So that's the one I'm gonna prioritize. They're also the biggest troublemakers. So I want the classroom that has um, maximum. I want this one right here. Oh, excuse me. I want this classroom right here to be in operation. So what I'm gonna do is hit this start button. First, I'm gonna hit reschedule. Then I'm gonna hit start. Then I'll come up here to foundation. Okay, now this class, is scheduled from three to six, but it's in this classroom, right? So you can tell which one it is by hovering over it. And I didn't know that at the time, but you can. So if I go like this, there, it'll hover it right there. So I wanna change this to be the other one. So edit the schedule, and there's a classroom right here in maximum security. That's where I want foundation education to be. So I'm gonna move this to there. Now I can designate that I want that to be the classroom where this is located, and there it is. So now hopefully when this program goes in, I reschedule it, look at this, boom. We've got five people ready to enroll in this, five people ready to go with this program, right? Now it's only four o'clock now, and I think it's actually just before four. So what I wanna do, since it's just before four, is I want to edit the schedule one more time. I'm gonna move this class to be there. This is gonna start at four. So now the people that are interested, if I reschedule, the people that are interested should go to this class because it starts in four and it's like 3.59 right now. I think, that's what it is, right? Let's let's also do this. Um, let's, uh, I think it's inside this. If I go to options, uh, graphics or game, maybe it's game. Uh, room checker box, clock type. I'm gonna change this to a 24 hour digital clock. Yeah. So now I can see that it's actually 1559, which is 359. So now it will be four o'clock and now the classroom will start. Class will be in session and we'll get some of these prisoners uh, getting down in here, which would be great. Now, Scott Gordon's cell, he's finally in his cell, which is great. Um, he doesn't have his camera installed and I wanted a camera in this room. Uh, so let's get a camera. Did I want a camera in this room? I thought I did, but now I'm second guessing. I kind of do, just in case he's digging. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put a camera in this room. Can I put it above the shower? Let's do that. That way I can face his bed. And then also uh, that camera might actually pick up these cells too as it, as it scans them, as it passes around them. It might actually pick that up, which would be nice. So I'll prioritize that, get that camera installed, which would be great. So this class should now be in session. And we can see there are people coming in to sit down. So we have some people participating in foundation. That is great. That's wonderful, awesome news. I don't know what this guy's doing. Move laundry basket to laundry. Okay, he's working, good. Now, I've lost visual because uh, this guy's okay. They're doing like little shift changes and re relaxing. This is the reason why I put the CCTV monitor and the door control system. I put it in the staff room instead. This is the reason why. Because when they're done, they can they have to go to the staff room. Guards have to go to a staff room. They don't get to rest in security. I don't think. I don't think anyway. Let's take a look at security. Uh, maybe. Staff prefer to rest in a staff room. Okay, they can rest here, but they prefer to do it in a staff room, which I don't blame them. So I think maybe their preference makes them, I don't know if their preference makes that better or not, I don't know. I'm gonna take, okay, 
Another thing I noticed is if I go to deployment, this exports used to be staff only. If I make it, um, hmm, it used to be staff only, but if I make it not staff only, does that mean the prisoners can now bring stuff into here? Or is it still the workmen that need to do that? I don't know. So I'm going to look at that and find out because I've, I've got that switched. So I want to see if any of these guys who are like awesome, by the way, working in here, really great. Um, overheating. Oh, it says he's overheating. Are they all overheating? Well, what's the temperature in there? Uh, temperature. It's 80 degrees. Oh, suck it up. Uh, canteen's pretty hot. 86 in there. 102 in the kitchen. Wow. And I even put a window there to help with that. Didn't really matter. Uh, didn't matter at all. Wow. There's an awful lot of meals being cooked. I just don't know if they're all getting to the trays. You know? I, I don't know. I want to see how well this reform program goes. So we've got, uh, looks like five people in class. Take a look here at experience. Okay. So now their success chance, I think is related to how many classes they go to. Because as this class continues, their success chance rises, right? I think that's how that works. So this guy's got a great chance to succeed. He's following right along with the class. That's great. Um, that's perfect, because I need someone to work in this damn library. This guy's okay. He's kind of doing all right. Uh, not doing all that well. He's sitting in the back of the class, so, you know, what they say. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe that's just a... I feel like a lot of the things I say are just sort of like a local thing. Like, you have to live where I live to know it. Maybe not. Um, Michigan people. Uh, so, we've got the cameras working. Now, this one is not hooked up to the monitor. So, let's get Scott Gordon's personal camera. Let's get his hooked up to the CCTV monitor, if I can even speak it properly. Here it is. Uh, connect to there. Okay. So now I should be able to see inside Scott Gordon's cell. There he is. And he's kind of, uh-oh. Hold on. What's going on now? Okay, class is over with. Now let's, I want to take a look here really quick. And see if I can, okay, so his success chance is here now. And his is right along with the class. I like that. That's good. Uh, not so good. Uh, let's see, grading experience, probably not that good. He's probably going to reoffend. If I can get them educated, though, that dramatically reduces the chances that they're going to reoffend, which is a really good thing. So I really want this class to continue every day. So I need to make sure that their needs are met so that they can go to this class every day. Uh, wow, that guy is really white. <laughs> Just saying, like, I'm all the people around him, like, I don't. The skin color, right? <laughs> I, I think of this guy as the white guy, and this guy as a white guy, but you look at this guy, that guy is a white guy. <laughs> All right? He is pink. Very pink. Casper. <laughs> well, see? See? Casper is white, right? Casper the friendly ghost? No one? No? I, I'm willing to bet most of my viewers are old enough to know that. Uh, Casper caught Grube? Grube? Uh, Casper was a developer that built software for a defense contractor and accidentally pushed the wrong buttons, leading to a missile getting launched, killing several persons. That's apparently aggrav aggravated assault. I would think that's accidental assault. <laughs> uh, looks like we have a pipe that's not getting water. Probably because this needs extended. So let's extend that there. Another thing I wanted to get working actually was the shop. But I swear I won't do that until we're out of debt. I swear. <laughs> Not out of debt, but like out of this new debt, right? We need new debt to be gone. And we have a death. It's the guard. And Christopher Chisel. Chisel? Chis? What? Uh, Chislom. Chislom. He has 67 years now because he's keeps killing people. Oh, gang member, probably blue. I'm gonna guess, blue. Totally blue. Look at all the blue guys. See that's they, they've moved, right? They're not over here anymore. Now they want to be down here. They want to be close to their leader. They keep moving cells. 
And he's got scissors. All right, now the scissors are coming from the library, but for some reason, uh, they're not getting picked up. Like, like all these, I have metal detectors outside both doors. And it's not working. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to turn the library staff only. Uh, because, like, they shouldn't be in there anyway. There's no reason for anyone to be in there because nobody's passed the course. So that should hopefully help us with the scissors problem. Okay, so what I want to do now is... Uh, I have eight people waiting solitary, but look, like there's the solitary cells are not being used, so it's fine. Um, but I think what I want to do is I want to turn this solitary area here uh, indoors. I want to make this indoors. I was going to make a really big solitary block that both the maximum and the minimum could share, but I'm not going to do that. I, I think I want to just turn this one indoors. Because I want to be able, I need to be able to heat it, you know, keep it, keep it warm. So what I'm going to do, and this kind of breaks a little bit of what I've been trying to do as far as the indoor prison idea, but I'm going to turn this found, I'm going to turn the whole thing in like this foundation. Then I'm going to take uh, the objects. I'm going to take this door, this door, and this door, and we're going to demolish these three doors down those doors and that is going to basically flip this so that it's like this isn't the out anymore so these rooms are going to be gone they're not solitary anymore these are still solitary but now we're going to have walls along the tops here hopefully okay so i already removed this as a room so i'm not sure why you're there Yeah, okay, good. All right, so this is indoors now, but now there's no way in because I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> uh, first things first, we need a solitary door. And I'm going to put a solitary door, I think, here. Or do I need two doors? I kind of need two doors, don't I? Uh, yes. I think I'm going to put one there and put one there. Okay, then we're going to take and demolish, I think, this wall. Um, and we're going to make a wall through here. And then demolish this wall. Like this. Yep. And then also make concrete walls here, here, and here. And then I'm going to lock these doors open for now so they can get in and out of this place just fine uh, lock it open okay now this is the kind of thing that when people play prison architect they normally build prisons like this I mean not exactly like this but they normally build things like this to where all the cells are inside one building and that's way way easier because this whole thing counts as a block now so if I wanted to and go to deployment see I can highlight the whole thing I don't have to do individual solitary cells. The whole thing is considered a block. And if I was to do like a guard, I could put a guard in this room. And it counts for this, this whole area, right? So a guard will always be in here because it counts this whole area now. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna make uh, all, the sol all the places that aren't solitary cells yet, I'm gonna make them solitary cells. So this one, this one, this one, uh, we're just gonna do this. Did I get a brick? Can I get a concrete wall here? No, let's do that. And let's prioritize that. Okay. See, these are, these are all going to be solitary cells now. So let's do solitary. And we're going to do that. Uh, no. Uh, yep, this one. Yep, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So now we have the solitary block, right? This area where people can be kept in solitary for a while, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know how I like this design with the door being like this and then this being blocked off and then this also being up and being blocked off. I may change that, but for now, that's how I'm going to do it. So let's go ahead and get these to be not locked anymore and we'll lock that down. So now solitary is really doing solitaire. Um, solitaire. Solitary is actually solitary.
And now what I can do is if I look at the temperature, it's cold in here, 32 degrees. So let's put a radiator in this. And this is why I say it's way, way easier to do this prison stuff, uh, to do it with uh, people um, like all in one building. This is why I say that, because I can just put two radiators now in this whole place and hook it up to hot water, which actually isn't gonna be as easy as I thought it'd be. Where is the, where is it at? Is it here? I think it's here. Yep, that's where it is. So we'll just hook this up to the hot water that's coming off of this radiator pump here. And that will hook this whole thing up and everything will be fine. So we should have adequate coverage for solitary uh, and then solitary will also now be warm. So their warmth need won't go skyrocketing when they're in here either, which will be good. Okay, so it's really late at night now. Let's take a look at the regime and see if I can make a new regime for maximum security. I kind of want to leave this block alone because that class is right here and I don't want them to move. I don't know how that works, but I don't want them to move. So um, I also need to keep... Wait, I didn't take away their free time, did I? This is 108 now. Wasn't this less before? Ah, uh, I don't know. This thing will never go away. Give prisoners more free time. It'll just never go away. Um, yeah, this is six. This has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and then supermax one two three four five six okay now supermax has freedom from eight to one which i really hate i really don't want that but that's just the way it is because i need him to be i'd rather him be that and have a weird schedule like that than to be with gen pop but that does mean that his free time overlaps with maximum and i don't want that so how about we move that his free time is going to start up here one, two, three, four, five, six. Then he'll have an eat time at seven to eight. Um, then he'll be on lockup and then sleep and then eat again. I think that's good for him. Now, because that puts him, that puts his free time ending at seven, which. You know, I mean, there's a little bit of overlap, but like, whatever, I don't care. Uh, let's also give him a little bit of yard time too. Let's give him a yard time here. Oh, but now I need to get his free time going. So there, actually I can do his free time sometime else, right? So like if I do his free time starting at 11, I don't know. I hate this six hour free time thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, two, three, four four, five, six. He's still got six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's, he's fine. Okay, so maximum security has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours of sleep. Let's take and eat into that just a little bit. Let's do two hours of free time here. Then we'll eat here. Then we'll have two hours in the yard, followed by Let's say three, yeah, let's say four hours of free time right here. Um, then we'll do the work here. And I'm actually gonna add one more hour of work. Then we'll do another eat period here. Then one more hour of free time and then they'll go to sleep. Let's see how this regime works. Uh, that means there's no lockup for maximum, which really I don't like that actually. So how about we end the day with lockup there? Does that still, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, still six hours, okay. I really don't want this stupid timer to start over again. I feel like it did already in this episode. I feel like it already did. But anyway, guys, that's what I've been working on. I've been trying to like figure out what the problem is with the temperature and try to fix it. And I mean, I think we're losing money in order to do it, obviously. I need to spend money in order to make things safer. No way around that, I guess. Now these guys are stuck again. Now that means, when these guys are stuck, that means that the something is really dangerous. It means that somebody is destroying something. So let's have this guy go in there. Okay, so he, nothing's good there. So let's have him go in there. Nothing's in there. Okay, how about in this cell? 
There he is. That means somebody's trying to fight, but for whatever reason, I can't see them doing it. But once he's unconscious, everything will be back to normal and everyone will be able to move through here, no problem. So, yeah. So I, I'm learning how this game is acting. I'm learning how things act again. Or at least I'm trying to learn how things act. Should I put another... How's their clothing need doing now? Have they got their needs under control? Clothing's going down. Hygiene's bad, but that's because it's late at night. They're going to shower. Safety's good now, which is great, because that means they won't arm themselves. If you don't feel safe, you arm yourself just in case, which means more people have weapons. Um, so we don't like that. It also increases the demand for weapons as well. Literacy needs actually not full. I'm not sure how this is met by somebody, but... Um, Maybe they're able to borrow books, even though they're not sorted. I don't think that's how that works. Anyway, I'm going to run this some more, and let's see what happens. Powers, conduits look good. Our gates are working great. Our gates work fine, even though this one here... Is it not installed this yet? What in the world? Who died now? Oh, <gasps> no way. Oh no, Scott Gordon is at it again. I was, at first I thought maybe Scott Gordon was dead and I was silently saying yes. <laughs> but no, clearly that didn't happen. He killed the guard. That's right outside his cell. And of course he stole the keys. Which is brilliant. So now he's on the loose. Let's go, guys. Out the door. Let's go get him. He's really fast. Like, look how fast he is. He's so fast. All right, this guy's tired, but you know what? Get out there. Wow. Just blows right past everybody. Is no one going to stop Scott Gordon? Is there no one to stop this man? Oh, look. It's locked shut. <laughs> Come and get him. Um, we need more than one guard, please. Yep. Everyone get in there and get him. Yes. Unconscious. Oh, this man. This guy is just... Well, at least... You see, now his schedule has him doing things at, like, times when my guards don't have anything to do, right? So, like, there's they're more likely to be able to get things done. And even with the camera, we didn't see him destroying his cell. So messed up, man. So messed up. Now we have a tunnel. Yep, this guy's trying to escape. Uh, yep, so we need to get that tunnel fixed up, fixed up too, or fixed up. Caught you. That's good. Uh, there's only one person awaiting solitary. So we did it. The solitary, the spree of solitary, or people waiting for solitary, is finally over with. Which is good. How is the temperature in here? Um, wow. Temp. Here we go. It's 68 all through here. See that? Two radiators took care of this whole thing. Now, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking maybe one radiator would have done it. But I put two in there just because. Just in case. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to call that the episode. I think this has been a productive episode. Far less bloody. Um, we did have a couple of deaths because, you know, we have a Supermax, but he's a legendary, and we have one of the legendary in here. But I, I think it's, it's starting to finally calm down. And I'm hoping that with that calm will come, hopefully, profit. I'm going to sell this because apparently they don't bring it when they need to. So I'm going to sell this stuff. That's going to give me money. And, yeah, now we just need to... Ooh, look at that. Store wood. 20 wood stacks worth a 1,000. See that? Boom. Love it. If I didn't have the workshop, uh, we'd be in real big trouble if I didn't have the workshop. Light does not have power. Of course it doesn't because I cut the power right here. All right. I think... I think... Uh, I need to open this door. I'll lock it open for now. 
Yeah, all right. I keep getting distracted. Uh, I'm gonna call this, uh, come back next time, and we'll see if this classroom here uh, finally gets us some educated people in maximum security because I really need the books sorted. I need people's literacy needs to be met. Um, and the only way to do that is to have people uh, educated enough to interact with it. So I, and hopefully this food need gets sorted out too. Look, this, this is like, oh, this is, okay. So it looks like, looks to me like the red ones are how many hungry people there are and the green ones, the number of meals. So this, does this mean we don't have enough meals? Do we need more meals? Maybe this is no longer a cleaning cupboard. Maybe I extend the kitchen down here. Hmm. I know I can't afford any more cooks. Scott Gordon's just hanging out here. Huh. Whoa, what? What's he doing? He's injured. What's he doing? Oh, he has free time, but like, what's he doing? How did he get, how did he get all the way over here? How is he? I don't know what this is. Why is he over here? He's not supposed to go that way. Uh, should I get rid of this door? I think as long as it's just locked, it's fine. This needs to be turned indoors too, I think. I think my way around this is to get a lot of people indoors. I need to get them inside longer. The outdoor idea is the theme, okay? We're trying to make sure that the, the whole theme of this is that it's a town kind of atmosphere, which means when you come out of your home, you come outside to somewhere else, to somewhere else. So all the cells, every cell door needs to be facing outdoors. So, um, yeah, that, which is exactly the way it is. Uh, dorms. I don't know how I'm going to do the dorms, but I definitely need to get protective custody done. So much to do guys. Come back for the next one and we'll see if, uh, We'll see if this terrible, terrible playthrough can actually get better. I'll see you next time. Bye.